Hey, what's up? This is your boy Norris. Welcome back to another saw alone. Now today we will be working on my wife, Mimi Style, her latest simplicity pattern, which is 9597. So just remember, whenever you see me, just know wifey is extremely busy and she has me, so I'm gonna get it done. So let's get started. Now, if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, please click the sewing basics video in the link below. If you need further instructions from that, because this is not a learn to sew video, I will encourage you to sign up to sewitacademy.com where you have access to the first five courses if you sign up for the free trial, okay? Now, once you get all your things together, let's get started. Once again, like I said, we're using Mimi G Simplicity Pattern 9597. Now we're doing view A, which is, which is the dress. Now view B is um, a jumpsuit, you'll see um, pant legs here. You really can't tell, but if you turn around and look at the line art in the back, you will see that those are pant legs right here on view B. But we're doing view A, and basically there's no difference much um, besides the pattern pieces for um, the pant legs, and everything else is basically the same exact way. Now, if you look to the top, now if you look in the back, uh, suggested fabrics, um, it says silky types, gauze, rayons, cottons, linen, and linen, which would include linen fabrics or lightweight cottons. Um, up under that are notions. Now you'll need um, three fourths of a yard of three eighth inch elastic. I mean, three eighths of an inch is the width of the elastic. And then you'll need five, um, five eighths of an inch buttons. Now, everything else, you have to look at your size and you'll see your bus your waist, your hips, all those measurements. And then the most important thing when it comes to the measurements for anyone, if you look down here to the bottom, you'll see finished garment measurements. So you'll get an idea of what that finished measurement will be once you sew it up because um, these patterns do have ease in it, okay? So now that we know a little bit about this pattern, let's get into the pattern pieces. Now first we have pattern piece number three. Now this. Now these are the shoulder straps. You're gonna cut two out of your fabric. Pattern piece number seven um, is the pocket. You wanna cut four out of fabric. Now if your fabric is really thick, I would suggest you do two out of your fabric and then two out of a, a lighter fabric. Now the one that's cut out of fabric is gonna be the one that's connected to the back and then the two that are lighter is gonna be connected to the front. So when you put your hand in your pocket, you don't see that lining. Um, but this right here, but these are side seam pockets, so you shouldn't see it at all. You will need four of these, okay? Pattern piece number one. Now this is the front bodice. Now you see this is a dart, and this right here is cut on the fold, so you wanna place this piece right here on the fold. And you're gonna cut one out of fabric, and you will cut one out of lining. Pattern piece number two, this is the back bodice. You wanna cut two out of fabric and also two out of lining. This right here is not cut on the fold. Um, you would just cut them all the way around. So you'll cut two and then two of the lining. Pattern piece number eight, um, you have the elastic guide. You don't need to cut this out of your fabric at all or lining or interfacing, only thing you need to do um, is use this as a guide for the length of the 3 eighths of an inch width um, elastic. Pattern piece number four. Now, this, now these are the loops that go in the back where you will be um, using for the buttons. You want to cut one of these out of fabric and also, you wanna pay attention to the arrow. So you wanna make sure you have that aligned with the parallel of your salvage edges, which will have it cut on the bias. And um, yeah, so make sure you cut it on the bias and you only need to cut one of these out of your fabric. Next, we have pattern piece number six. This is the back yoke. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Next, we have pattern piece number five. This is the front yoke. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Next we have pattern piece number nine. This is the front skirt. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. And last but not least, we have pattern piece number 10, and you wanna cut two of these out of your fabric as well. And this is the skirt back. 
All right, so now once you have all of your pattern pieces cut out of your fabric, we can begin sewing. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanna show you a few things so you won't be confused in the process. Now, the bodice is going to be a contrasting fabric. So it's white with the orange polka dot, and then the, from, from the bias down, it will be orange with the white polka dots, okay? And then this white fabric right here, we have for the lining for the bias, because if I put it back here, you don't see it. And if I used the same fabric for the lining, you will see some of the polka dots. So just to let you know, all right? So first things first, let me go ahead and grab my pins. Um, I have the markings for my, my darts, and then I have my markings for the shoulder straps. Now this right here will be a little bit more important later on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pin my darts together and I will sew them. Just so you know with the darts, you want to right size facing, you want to put, you wanna line those, align the lines up, making sure that needle goes through this line and then out on the other side of the line. If not, just do some adjustments. And then we're gonna pin all the way down to the bottom where the end of the dart is. Okay, so basically we're just gonna to go to the machine. We're going to stitch, back stitch right here at the beginning. But once we get to the end of the dart, we will not back stitch. You just wanna pull your threads and then tie a knot. Okay. All right. So we're back from the machine. And like I said, I'm using this white right here for my lining and you do the same exact thing with the lining and also uh, with the front bias. So I went ahead and pressed my dart down as you can see here. And then for right now, we're just going to put this to the side and we're going to grab the loops for our buttons that go on our back bodice. Now what we're going to do right now is just take it. You want to see it here, take it. And then we're gonna fold it in half. And then we're gonna head to the machine and we're gonna stitch from the raw edge a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin a few times to keep it in place. I got it all pinned and once, I, and once again, like I said, I'm gonna head to the machine. I'm gonna start at one end and stitch all the way down to the other end using a quarter inch seam allowance from that raw edge. Okay, so go ahead and do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. And like I said, went ahead and stitched that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim maybe an eighth of an inch off. Just a little bit. So now we're going to use a tool to turn it right side out. Now I believe wifey got this from Joanne's, I believe, but it's just basically a very narrow piece of, you, you damn near can use a piece of wire. You know what I'm saying? Just cut the ends, make sure it don't snag. So let's go ahead and turn this right side out. Use that kind of stuff the, the beginning. Okay, now if you don't have a tool like this, what you can do is you can use a needle and thread. You can do one side of one end and then just take the needle all the way through and then a thread to pull it all the way out. All right, so go ahead and give this a good press and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, I went ahead and gave it a good press. It's laying flat. Now we need to cut five individual loops at two and three fourths of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Measure it out, one, two, and then three fourths will be a quarter away from the three. So right here. And then next I'm just going to continue marking it with the one I cut out first, okay? So that'd be one, two, three, and then four. We might have a little bit at the end left off. Sometimes they do that just depending on what type of fabric you have. Okay. okay, so I have my five loops. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my left back bodice piece, okay? 
So this right here will be my side seam and this right here will be the center. And I have markings. Now these five markings right here are for the belt loops. So basically what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the belt loops and we're going to pretty much do them just like this. Should I show you again, we're gonna take it and then we're just basically gonna bend it to one side. Now I do it like this, where the point is, is on the bottom. So when you turn the right side out, you'll see that point right there and they'll be able to grab that button. So go ahead and place the center just like that with the raw edge touching raw edge of the back bodice. And then I'm just going to pin that in place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue that all the way down. So now we're just gonna to go to the machine. We're gonna tack down each one just a little bit all the way down at five eighths of an inch from um, that raw edge, okay? Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, as you can see, I have all five of the belt loops um, tacked down on the left back bodice. So what we're gonna do now, we're going to stitch the front bodice and the back bodice at the side seams, okay? So as you can see, my two dots at the top, that's how you know the straps are, are there. If you did all your markings, so that's how you know whether it's upside down or not. And then your dart should be pressed down, okay? So right side is face, I'm gonna grab one side. I'm going to stitch this. I'm going to pin this. And then also there is a, a notch right there too on the side, just to let you know you're in the right place. Match that, that dart up. Okay, do the other side. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna head to the machine. We're gonna stitch down both the side seams using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. And as you can see, I stitched them together. I went ahead and just press these seams flat open because it will be lined so you don't have to surge it or anything like that. So once you do that, you wanna just take this and put it to the side for just a moment. And then next you wanna grab the shoulder straps. So you want to fold these right sides facing and we're gonna stitch along that raw edge using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So you wanna do that for both of these. While I have you here now, we're gonna grab your front yoke. Now you probably can't see it, but I have two rows of basting stitches. Now for me, I don't do my basting stitches at my seam allowance. I do it just under my seam allowance so you won't see all the threads at the end. So I do it a half inch and then I do it a quarter inch within that half inch. And then um, as, as you know, if you do basting stitches, because this is not a learn to sew video, you should probably know this, but if you don't, you want the back stitch at the beginning but not at the end. You wanna pull your threads at the end, cut them off so you can pull and gather. Now, I started this maybe an inch from this, this, the edge because we do need to have a flat area here for the seam allowance, which is five eighths of an inch. I, sometimes I go a little bit higher than that just to be out the way. So here and here is about an inch, but within this, I have the basing stitches. So now, what I do, basically, to make sure that I have it the same length, so what I wanna do is you want to pull, usually I pull the bobbin on the bottom, okay, so I just pull it, making sure I distribute that gather all the way throughout the top. And the reason I'm doing this is because this right here will be attached to the bodice. This is half of the bodice, and we have two of them, so the other one would be the other half. So once I get the gases down, I go ahead and put that up. You can see that this part here is hanging out, so I just do it just a little bit more. Okay, so once I do it like this, 
I'm off just a little bit, so I let it out some. And then once I have it exact, I take that thread and I just tie a knot. I do about three times to make sure it don't come loose because I have it exactly where it is. And because I have it fitting perfectly, now I go ahead and distribute. Okay, because you don't want all your gathers to be in one place. All right, so now that I have it like that, you want to do your other front bodice piece the same exact way. So I've already done this one, it's perfectly. Now these right here are ready to go. So I'm gonna put this to the side for later on. So now let's go handle the straps, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and I went ahead and turned our straps right side out just like we did the belt loops and we gave it a good press. So now we're just gonna take this and put it to the side for just a moment. And we're gonna work on our front and back yoke. Okay, so starting with our back yoke, I'm going to place them right sides facing. And in the back where the three notches are, I'm gonna go ahead and pin. So I'm gonna head to the machine. I'm gonna stitch this down using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our front yoke. Now this is the front yoke. Now the front yoke have, has the gathers. I went ahead and stitched and I went ahead and searched off my seam. You can lay it flat if you want, but I just searched mine together and then I pressed it. So you'll have your front looking just like this. But since the back is not any gathers right here, you can go ahead and just stitch that first. And then we're gonna come back and finish off the top. Okay, so we're back from the machine and we have our back yoke um, stitched together at the middle seam here. And as you can see, I finished off that um, inside seam with a serge. Um, next, I'm gonna turn this upside down so we can have the top of the raw edge facing downward. So I went ahead and I pressed down a quarter inch across the bottom here, which is actually the top of the back. And after you do that, we're going to fold again a half inch, all right? So you wanna go ahead and fold a half inch Get your seam gauge or whatever just to double check to see what it's looking like and you want to do that all the way um, across to the other side so go ahead and turn after you turn it under the quarter inch you want to go ahead and then turn a half inch just like this all the way across now do that and give it a good press come back and we will continue okay so i'm back from the machine i went ahead and folded it over a half inch so i top stitch but i made sure that i caught underneath so it can create a casing for that 3 eighths of an inch elastic later on. Okay, so now that we have our back um, stitched, our back yoke stitched in the center, and we have our front yoke stitched in the center too, we're gonna go ahead and take our pocket bags and we're right sides facing, we're going to pin them on the outside seam of the, of the back and also the front. Um, there should be a notch on that side seam and also a notch in the center of the bag where you pin. So we'll go ahead and pin here. Okay, so now we're gonna pin the pocket bags to the front the same exact way. So let me go ahead and do these. Okay, now we're gonna to head to the machine. I'm gonna stitch down that pocket bag to the front using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You wanna do that for both sides. And then for the back yoke, the same exact thing. Um, 3 eighths of an inch here and then also on the other side. So do all four sides, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. Um, side note, I went ahead and I surged that seam right there. It's just 3 eighths of an inch. And the, seam, and the serge only does like a quarter inch. So it don't, it don't even go to that stitch, but I did it just so it can be clean because it is going to be um, underneath, all right? So besides that, you don't have to do that, but I like to do it because I don't like my fabric to fray and it'll be a little tough and challenging to serge this part once we stitch down everything else, okay? But this right here is my front yoke and I'm just going to hold this up just a little bit you'll see that I understitched on 
uh, my pocket side and the seam allowance is facing my pocket. So that's basically how you understitch. You pull the all of the seam allowance to one side and the side that you want to fold under, you want to um, edge stitch right on the right side of where the seam is, okay? So once again, my pocket is this way and all my seam is on the right hand side. So just on the right side of that seam, I went ahead and edge stitch. And that's for only the front where we did the gathers at. You don't want to do the back that way, okay? So once you understitch on both sides, and I'm just gonna show you one side, just let you know the same things apply to the other side. Um, right sides facing, we're going to take our back yoke and we're gonna place it right on top, okay? So before we start pinning and everything, we're gonna make sure that our dots, we should have two big dots where um, onto our pocket bag and those should line up for the front and also the back. And then we're just going to basically pin there first because those are the most important. We wanna make sure we have that in the right place. Okay. We'll do the same thing for the one up here. Okay, so, so once we have that lined up, we can go ahead and pin the rest of that side here. And also the top. Now when we come to the top, you're going to see that the front yoke extends higher um, than the back by five eighths of an inch, okay? That's normal, um, so don't worry about that. And I'm just going to pin maybe an inch above at the top because we're only going to be starting just past where the pocket is, okay? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to the machine and starting, I say maybe a quarter inch above the pocket, we're gonna stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance starting at, starting right here, not the very top, but we're gonna start right here using five eighths of an inch. We're gonna go until we get to our um, dot. We want to back stitch. And then once we do that, you want to cut your thread and we're gonna come all the way down here and starting at the dot down here, back stitch, stitch all the way down and then back stitch at the end, leaving this middle open so you can reach inside your pocket, obviously. And then after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and pin, we'll go ahead and pin right here real quick. We're gonna go ahead and stitch our pocket bag close, starting five eighths of an inch all the way around until we get to right here. So do all of that here, and then obviously we're gonna do the other side the same exact way, and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm just gonna give you a little review of what we did. Um, starting at the dot and then down, we stitched five, five eighths of an inch. And then starting just past where the pocket starts, right here, five eighths of an inch, we went down to the dot, leaving in that opening right there, okay? And then also around that pocket bag. I surged the opening of our casing. I had to take the seam ripper and open that up because we're supposed to be using this for the elastic and we'll do that in just a moment. But before we get there on the back side, the back yoke here. So like I said, on the back, we're going to snip right at the top of the pocket bag, but only on that back seam. So right here, right where, this, where would the stitching stops. Okay, so basically just like that. And then on the bottom, right here in the same place, Okay, so it's gonna be just like that, okay? Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, next, we're going to take our 3 eighths of an inch wide elastic, and obviously, you're gonna use your elastic guide to cut out how long you need it, depending on what size you cut out. So I'm gonna take a safety pin for the end, and then I'm gonna close it, and then now I'm just going to slide this through the back through that built-in casing we made, okay? Let's go ahead and slide that in. Okay, so just a tip, once it gets almost to the inside, you wanna just pin this part here all the way through just so it won't go in and you, you won't be able to get it out. So now let's just continue 
and make sure you keep it flat. We don't want any twisted elastics. Then I also want to make sure that I put it just right there where that seam is. Just right there where the raw edge is. Just line that up. So now make sure it's flat. All right, so now we're just going to head to the machine and we're going to tack down both ends of the elastic right at five eighths of an inch on both sides, okay? Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, now we have the side seams all together. And like I said up top, we didn't stitch all the way up. You know, we just gave that side seam a good press. Press that seam open, of course. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to come to where we tack down that elastic on the inside. I'm going to try to pull that elastic to right at that seam allowance, and I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Maybe like a maybe like close to a quarter inch away from the actual stitch, just so we won't catch that when we're pressing later. Do the other end. Okay, so now we're gonna close out the remainder of the top of the um, side seam. Okay, so I'm gonna measure. Now we're supposed to be, it should be exactly five eighths of an inch away from the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and baste that in here too. Then the same thing on the other side seam. Now just on the top now. Okay, I wanna make sure it's five eighths of an inch away. Okay, so just head to the machine and you want to just stitch. So you want to just start here at the top of the back yoke and then stitch until we meet stitching that already existed, okay? So you want to do that for both sides using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and we went ahead and finished off that side seam up here to the top. And now we're going to attach the bodice to the front yoke, okay? So a right size facing, this is the top. So a right size facing, gonna fold it down. There should be some notches. Okay, I'm gonna pin at my notches. Okay, so for the ends, what we're gonna do is, I'm going to fold that seam allowance like this. Okay, so this right here is the front. You just want to fold back a five eighths of an inch and it meets right up with that seam as you can see right here. Okay, so you definitely want to finish off the end just like that. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're going to start on one side and stitch all the way down to the other side using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see right here, and we have the bodice attached to the front. And then now what we're gonna do is, we're going to attach our lining. Before we continue and attach our lining pieces, we're going to take our straps. I would prefer uh, for wifey to have the seam of the straps on the inside and outside be the fold. So I'm going to place it right here where those in between the two dots that we have. And I'm gonna pin it in place so I can tack it down in a, in a bit. And then I'm gonna place the other one on this side here. If these fit perfectly, I mean, if you can try it on right now and kind of adjust it and get it where you want to. You can place it uh, in between the two dots on the back, whether it's if you need it shorter or whether you need it, if, if it's perfect, you can put it right on the raw edge. Because wifey haven't tried this on yet, I'm going to basically not tack it down in the back and I'm just going to leave the seam open um, in between these two dots on both sides of my back. That way we can just slide it through Wifey can adjust it, and then if she have it in a good place, we can tack it down then, okay, to close out that seam. So I'm just only going to tack it out right here. 
Um, if you know that these will fit, um, you can tack it down on both places and then come back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack these down and then we can continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and tacked down um, the shoulder straps. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the lining, right size facing, I'm going to overlap it and making sure that I put my two dots in the same position where that um, where the straps are. I'm gonna pin there first and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, so we're not gonna forget about the back. You wanna make sure we align that seam up. We don't want nothing goofy, right? We want everything to be aligned and in the right place. So I just noticed I didn't mark my two dots, but I see my two dots here on my back bodice piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin. And I'm gonna just try to transfer those in here, okay? So the reason why I did that, well obviously because it's a marking, you wanna do all your markings. But when I start stitching, I'm not gonna stitch this because I want wifey to try this on to adjust the straps how she wanted to her liking and then once she do that i'll just be able to um either one of us will finish it we'll just be able to put it through there that hole that opening and then we'll close it out after she tried on so let me go ahead and finish pinning okay so now we're going to head to the machine so when it comes to that side seam where the back bodice meets the front bodice, that seam allowance is pressed up. So you're gonna have to pull it down so you can stitch it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it down like this and I'm gonna pin right there on that seam. You don't want your seams not being aligned. That's gonna look hella goofy to another, to another sewer or seamstress. And then same thing with this side, I'm just pull that down just so we can stitch. So we're gonna head to the machine and we're gonna start on one side right here. I'm gonna start here in the corner. Um, obviously back to the beginning, we're gonna go to the corner, pivot, go up, pivot again. And once I get to that first dot, I'm gonna back stitch to secure that stitch and I'm gonna cut my thread and then I'm gonna hop over to the dot on the left. So that'll keep that opening for adjustments later. And then I'm gonna continue all the way across and I'm gonna do the same thing at these two dots. I'm gonna backstage at the first one, break my thread and then hop over to the next dot to leave that opening. And then I'm gonna continue pivoting until I get to this side right here. Now once you do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, I just wanna give y'all a quick tip. So, I've already stitched um, at the machine all the way around and stopping here on both sides. But we do have to do understitching um, across the top. And then we're going to do understitching as much as we can across the bottom. But I found it to be a lot easier to understitch across the top if I don't have this stitch because it's kind of hard to get up in the machine like that. So basically I'm, I'm gonna undo this real quick so I have more to open up to really get that understitching done. So once once you understitch that, then you can finish it up here and then try your best to get as far as in as you can to understitch the bottom, okay? So do that understitching, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I've already done a little understitching, but I just wanted to show you just in case, you know what I'm saying, you, you might've forgotten or you, you might not know. So once I open up the seam here, I'm able to get further in. So I started back here and I understitched on the lining side and my seam allowance is facing, as you can see right here, facing my lining. So I'm gonna just edge stitch very close to that seam on the lining side, which is understitching. But I don't want to forget to not close out the opening here for wifey strap so she can do adjustments later. So I've already done it here, back stitch, and I broke my thread. Now I'm just going to come here on the other side and then continue. You want to just, you know what I'm saying? You want to pull it just a little bit to make sure you get it right at that seam. So 
so now that I'm coming up to that first dot that's on the other side of my back yoke, I want to get close. And once I get to the dot, I'm going to back stitch. And then cut my thread. And I'm going to move over. And then continue. Now I'm going to continue until I get as close as I can to the corner. And then I'm going to close out the bottom of my back yoke seam at the bottom. And then I'll start understitching that last seam. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and did um, understitching all the way across the top as close as I could to get. I, I'm probably maybe like an inch off from the corner. And um, for the bottom, <laughs> I could probably only get about right here because this right here is already closed off. Um, it's really challenging trying to understitch into corners, especially when you have a tight space to get into the machine. So if you're able to get all the way here, more power to you. Um, but honestly, you don't even have to understitch the bottom if you don't want to. I like to at least get this much, as much as I can. So when I turn the right side out, um, the front will roll to the inside just a little bit and it'll help towards the end too. So um, now let me go and let's go ahead and kind of trim some of the seam allowance off. Turn the right side out. Get your point turner. These right here are really good tools. If you haven't seen me use them before, go ahead and point that those corners out. Oh, look at those loops, those beautiful loops. So now we're just gonna give this a really good press. And on the bottom, you're gonna press under the seam allowance. Now, I'm not gonna do this right now. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna give it a good press and I'm gonna pin it um, just for the sake of time for the video. But go ahead and give it a good press and then fold this under and you can press this too and then hand stitch this close and that will secure um, that seam right there on the inside of your bodice. Okay, so go ahead, do that, come back and we'll continue. All right, so I'm back from the machine, back from the pressing station and look at that. Once you press it, I have it pinned right here so the bottom can stay, so the inside can stay um, secure. Um, until I finish but yeah the straps are done almost I just have to do the adjustments with wifey and then turn to the back one thing we have to do is add the buttons and boom that's gonna be nice this right here is finished wifey is gonna look so good in this so honestly we're almost done everything else is pretty pretty simple we just have to finish up the um, other layers that go um, underneath the front and back yoke. Okay, so the same way that we gathered the front for the bodice is the same way we're gonna gather the front and the back skirt. So let me grab the front skirt. Okay, so to determine where the front and back skirt is, the front skirt have, has a double notch for the center, and then the, um, the back skirt has um, three notches for the center okay so basically you want to go ahead and do your two rows of um, gathering stitches and you want to make sure minus, minus the seam allowance you want to make sure you gather that down to fit okay basically like that if you want you can use your front yoke as a reference. So basically, you want to just gather it and then making sure that that right there is exact. And that's what I did. So I did it for both pieces. And then also you want to do the same thing for your back with your back yoke, okay? So now, since I know that that fits on both sides, do your gathering, make sure you distribute the gather all the way across and like I told you when we did the gather for the front yoke, you want to leave at least the seam allowance. I do about an inch. I don't gather that close to the edge of the fabric on both sides because you want to leave room to lay flat to sew. Okay, so go ahead and 
10. Okay. So now we're just going to head to the machine and stitch all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm probably going to surge my seam after I get done just so it can be clean so it won't fray. So I'm putting this to the side right now. We just go ahead and do the back while we're here. So this right here is the back yoke. And then now we just have to make sure we gather the bottom. Gather the top of the back skirt to fit the bottom of the back yoke. So boom, it's perfect. I did my two rows of um, basing stitches just to reiterate you back stitch at the beginning, but at the end you pull your strings and then you distribute that gather all the way across. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's go ahead and put these right sides facing and the center is going to be where you have the three notches. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin at my notches first. Okay, so now we're also gonna take our back skirt and we're gonna stitch down the center using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm also gonna finish with my serger. So go ahead and do this one and then also your front skirt Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. Now this right here, I went ahead and pressed my seam open. And then this right here is the back. This is the back skirt. Now this is super, super big. That's how you get that nice flowy dress at the bottom because it's so much gathered and you have a lot of fabric. It's just movement when you start walking, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the front skirt and just lay it over top. And we're going to connect this. We're going to pin at both side seams. There should be a notch for you to pin first and then continue all the way down. Okay, so let's just head to the machine. We're going to stitch down both side seams there and then there using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. All right, so I'm back from the machine and I went ahead and pressed all of my seams. So now let's go ahead and attach the skirt to the yoke, all right? To the front and back yoke of the dress. So um, I put a pin so, so I wouldn't lose placement or what or where my back was, so my back, so, it could get confusing because they almost look the same once you sew them and press them together. So let me go ahead and find my back piece. And right side is facing. You want to match up that center back. And I'm going to go ahead and match up that center front too. And then also I'm going to match up both side seams. Now this one right here is going to make sure all my seams align. Okay, so once you do that, it makes everything else a little easier. Okay, so you can adjust where you need to. Okay, so I have it pinned all the way around. And now we're just gonna do a straight stitch. You wanna stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So go ahead and do that, come back and we'll continue. All right, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance. And then only thing you have left is to remember to do your hand stitching right here on the inside where that lining is. And then also, if you haven't adjusted your straps, you want to stick it into that hole that we left so we can make the adjustments. I have wifey do that after we get done with this video. And then last but not least, the hem. So the hem is five eighths of an inch and you have two options. You can surge it all the way around and do a double fold for the five eighths, or you can just do one fold of the five eighths and top stitch that. I mean, this is a casual dress. Um, I would recommend you do a stitching on it. Um, so you won't have to trouble yourself with the hand stitching. But once you do all of that, 
we're all done. All right, congratulations. Now, I hope you enjoyed this solo long and remember to tag us both at Mimi G Style and also at Norris Dental 4 so we can see all your amazing makes. All right, see you in the next one.